Hey everyone, Chad Bowton here. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for taking such an interest in my Game Boy Android gamepad project. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it and there was a lot of good response from it. Um, but one of the things that a lot of people were asking was a uh, how-to guide on how to do it. So that's why I kind of wanted to go over a little bit of the techniques anyway. I don't have an actual another Game Boy to take apart at the moment but uh, I can kind of go through how I did it. First things first, um, what you're going to need is obviously the Game Boy. You're going to need uh, a Wii Remote. Um, I'm not sure I know stores like Best Buy sell um, like a generic one that's much cheaper and I'm, I'd assume that it works just the same but I can't guarantee that. Um, I used a Dremel, uh, some sanding paper, an X-Acto knife, uh, like one of these guys, uh, some masking tape, and a pen, a straight edge or ruler, just to uh, make the cut in the plastic. Uh, you're going to need some screwdrivers, uh, which brings me to the point of the, both the Game Boy and the Wii Remote use a special tri-winged screwdriver. Uh, I don't have one of those, but what I was able to do was use a very fine flathead screwdriver, but because it was slightly too wide, I kind of filed the edges, but I've I've got quite a few of these, and I could see needing it again, so I kind of sacrificed it. But yeah, if you can see up close there, I, I just kind of filed there and there. Um, when you get the Game Boy, <clears throat> There's going to be six screws on it. There's, yeah, one, two, and then underneath the battery cover, there's one in here, and there's one in here, and then there's these two here. Taking those out separates the case. Now you see here, this is how I have it hooked up. Um, we'll get into the, the circuitry here in a minute where I did the um, where I did the soldering to make the connections. We remote same thing right here. So you've got one, two, three, four, and I believe that's all that there was here. And then inside there are the screws that just hold the circuit board on. Now you want to take that out. You just want to get the circuit board separated from the plastic enclosure and there will be guides online on how to take a Wii Remote apart and how to take a Game Boy apart if you have any uh, additional questions about that. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest things here, or the two biggest things, is how to cut out for your phone case in which case I used this guy and this actually is part of a two-part case there's a hard plastic outer like this and then there's a silicone inner piece and what happened is basically to get let the phone get in and out easily I used just this part and I built it up with some of this double-sided sticky foam and yeah just used a little bit here too just so I could easily place my phone in and out just by pulling on it. Had I used the re uh, regular case, then you know usually to get a phone in and out of a case, yeah, there's a little bit of a fight to it. So that's why I kind of went with this style. Um, I don't know how easy it'll be to find one for your phone, but uh, just take a look around, you know, um, rig something up. But uh, what's important here is is uh, getting the size, once you do get the case, getting the size that you need to cut out here. Now, what I do to make perfectly clean lines in plastic like this, this is where you want to use a razor blade. Just as an example on here, um, I would first take a piece of masking tape. And you take the masking tape and you put it on the part that you want to cut here. Obviously you want to cut well, you want to cut a straight line here and a straight line here and then you'll want to do 
the sides here. And then you worry about cutting it out in the corners afterwards, but you need to score those straight lines. So you put the tape across the case of the Game Boy. And then you'll need a straight edge, which I used a ruler somewhere. Okay. Can't find it at the moment, but pretending that this is a straight ruler, this is actually a curved ruler. <laughs> but you go along and you make several scores in the plastic. And you keep following your ruler, holding it down tight, cut away from yourself, don't cut yourself. And this will get a nice deep score line in there. So now the goal here isn't to cut all the way through the plastic. You'll actually be doing that with a Dremel. But you need a guiding line that you can follow. What I used was any grinding wheel, which is basically a sanded, like a sand disc, a very thin disc. And you can go along and basically you cut very close, but not extremely close that if you make a mistake you go over it. Because you only get one shot at this or you wreck the whole appearance of the Game Boy. And you cut along with this grinding disc all the way along here. It melts the plastic a bit. You cut along in here. And you cut along in here. You know, and you basically get the, the shape cut out. And you take the corners out and then you can remove the piece. And it's just this ugly looking thing and you think it's terrible and you'll never make it look nice. But it's not true. It's fine. As long as you can see your scored lines here. All you have to do is, you know, get as close as you can. You can switch over to a bit like this, which is a rounded sanding drum. And you can come even closer, but not quite going up to the line. Depends how steady of a hand you have. And you get right up close there. Your final step is going to be to use a file. You take the file and you just you just have to file it all along in here. Get it nice and straight up until you get up to that scoring. Until you make the scoring disappear and you're right up there, nice tight line. Here I'm holding more or less what the um, front circuit board would look like that holds the screen and uh, has all the contacts for the front buttons. Now, what I've done here is actually, I'm just holding it together with my finger, but I've cut it using, using the Dremel disc. Here you can see the uh, wires that I've attached. Now, this is what I've soldered in place, and you're going to have to look at the pictures closely to see exactly where I put them. But basically, all I've done is soldered uh, individual wires for each of these contacts and these are running off to the Wii remote over here. Um, I've, ha I've had to or I guess you could just solder it on but I've drilled holes actually right here which I show in the instructables and uh, you can run the wire in through the back of the hole like this, see? And then solder onto the front here and it makes contact with these. Now what I've had to do is to make contact uh, scrape away some of this protective film that they put on. So on the contact pads I've had to scrape just a little bit here to expose the copper and you'll see the copper color. And then that allowed me to solder right to it. The next part is removing the plastic on the back of the enclosure. Now, what I've done is cut down inside of here, all the way around, also with the Dremel. Uh, I used the drum, like this one, and a combination of that and the disc. The disc I used first to cut out the main part of it. Same thing, you'll have to go along with the file after that, maybe the razor blade, just to clean up these edges here, just to get it inside. But then the Wii Remote sits just nice inside of here once you do that. One other thing that I had to do 
was there's actually the port on the front of the Wii Remote controller and that port is where you would hook the nunchuck or the classic controller and the metal actually protrudes here just a little bit so what I've done is kind of snip the corners of it and kind of bent the metal just so that it would fit inside of here. Another option would have been just to cut this hole out so you still have access to that so you could still use the classic controller or the nunchuck which are both supported by the app. Um, I had to make one more hole here. You'll see. For this uh, infrared sensor I believe is what that was. And um, what you can do, and I hadn't done it yet, was you could hollow out um, a game cartridge or just cut out this part here and stick it in here just for looks to cover it up. Um, I haven't done that, but uh, it would look much better. Um, another option, I wasn't able to figure it out, but putting a power switch in the top here to kill power to the battery. Now I'm not able to really show you here because I have this all glued in place but originally on the Wii Remote it had two posts standing up which were contacts for the AA batteries that would sit inside the controller. Now in order for this to fit inside you have to get rid of those plus we're going to be using the Game Boy's original battery slots to house this anyway so you'll have to find where those are soldered on take the iron to it melt it if you have a solder sucker suck it out just get those clips out of there uh, it wasn't too difficult um, around here you'll notice that these two contacts here the, for the positive and for the negative are connected together. This is great, you can leave this alone. And then what you'll want to do on this original uh, negative connector, you'll want to solder this to where the negative originally went on the Wii remote. So I've run a wire, as you can see right here, this black wire, and it goes up to this point here. So that's where it used to be soldered to. And likewise, the gray one goes over into this connector here. I've had to, I believe that this one was attached over to here to connect to this one. So I just snipped that off there, put it back in there, glued it in place, and then soldered my gray wire here back onto the board. Now you'll just have to play with everything here, trimming it down, getting it to fit in here. Um, and you know, you'll want to glue it all together. Uh, I've glued this here at this point and over here, there's actual, actually a couple uh, little plastic pillars that stick up on the other side here. Can't really see them down there but I put a little bit of glue on there and they hold this part, like this section down in place. Um, I use this uh, Elmer's Ultimate Glue. You can also use uh, contact cement or a two-part epoxy or even super glue if you want to be quick enough. Actually, I don't know if I'd really use the super glue. Then you'll get it all put back together and get this to fit on here. Now unfortunately you're only left with really one screw on the bottom here to hold the Game Boy back together. What's going to hold it for the most part is the enclosure or the case that you put on for your phone. And you'll notice here I've put three screws in. I'm not sure why I didn't put the fourth screw in. I believe honestly it came down to me only having three screws that just happen to fit in those holes um, but basically you see down in here the screws used to run from the back side but now you can actually just run them back the other way measure it out and drill the holes exactly where you need it to be 
find find some screws. I didn't want to use the tri-wing screws. I want to use some Phillips screws so I could get a good grip on it and tighten it back in there. But putting this on holds this whole top assembly together. Plus you have the one screw on the back here. It ends up being quite sturdy. That's about all I can show in the video uh, without having actually another Game Boy to do this on. I would have loved to do one from scratch, but uh, at the moment I don't have it. But uh, I am more than welcome, or you're more than welcome to ask any questions, and uh, I will try to reply to your comments as I've been doing on to any problems that you encounter building this. Uh, check out my Instructables page where I'll have my photos up and try to highlight which contact points I soldered to and uh, I hope this has been at least a little bit helpful in trying to make your own Game Boy and Android gamepad. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video um, just give it a like please and uh, subscribe. Uh, I'll have more videos coming out. I'm always doing random projects so uh, we'll have some things coming out here soon. Thanks for watching. See ya.